was motionless on the ground. Why was it so defensive when it saw someone approaching it? What exactly happened? What had happened to it? Its behavior seemed ferocious, but it seemed to be just cheering for itself, which made people wonder what happened. As the video shows so, this link stayed in place without moving. As the man kept approaching it, it just made a few movements and seemed a little wary. Since it had its legs caught in the trap, it could not move. The lynx was barking in place and seemed frustrated. Because of its mobility, it could only pin its hopes on others, but it was still uneasy. So as the man kept approaching it, it waved its paws as if trying to warn the man not to come any closer. In fact, this lynx was wary of humans for a reason. Although this lynx was a carnivore, but because of its small size, it has many natural enemies and humans are their most powerful enemy. Since lynxes had economic value for their pelts and they were a small feline with black ears and a pattern on their bodies that resembled a leopard, poaching of them was always present, which was why this lynx was so heavily guarded. If it wasn't for this lynx being injured, it would have been hard for us to encounter them. They are all powerful hunters in nature and have a wide range of activities, and they prefer to live alone, so it is difficult for humans to meet them. As the man got closer, he found that the lynx had a trap on its hind legs. Immediately afterwards, the man found a board and the board had a hole underneath. The man held the board towards the lynx close and the lynx was very worried that the man would hurt it. Although its hind legs caught trap. But it was still struggling and kept trying to move back, as if not want the man near it. After a while, the lynx seemed to recognize that the man was here to help it out of trouble, and suddenly it became docile and quietly lying on the ground. Due to the cooperation of the lynx, the man used the wooden board to separate the lynx and its injured leg, and soon he released the trap. After getting rid of the trap, the lynx seemed frozen, and it stayed in the shadow formed by the board for a long time without responding. When the man approached it again, it was no longer wary and did not retreat, but only looked at him cautiously. After the rescue, the lynx did not leave immediately, but stayed there meekly and quietly and kept looking at the man, as if to express its gratitude. Perhaps they would not meet again afterwards, but at that time they got along harmoniously. Animals are very smart, they will be close to each other after knowing that the other is not malicious. In fact, people and animals can get along harmoniously. But many people only care about profit and do not know what serious consequences their actions will have. Animals are kind, if we can all be as loving as this man and dare to help injured animals and not take advantage of the opportunity to hurt them. Then the animals will be closer to us. We live in nature with animals, so we need to live together in harmony to make the world a better place. If we can respect animals and treat them equally as we respect ourselves and humans. Then we and they can both be happier and more enjoyable. The pig shooters sniped at the man, but they had no idea he wasn't alone. The relationship between humans is so cruel that sometimes it's easy to think that some animals are more human than people. Humans are vainly seen as the only emotional animals in nature. Animals may not have written or ritual languages, but they have the same sincere emotions as humans. The stories we'll tell today will prove that animals are even kinder and fairer to people than some people are to their own kind. Sam has been a hunter all of his life. Many years ago, he built a small house in the depths of the tiger forest, where he would go to hunt almost every weekend. By the way, he would stay away from the hustle and bustle of the city and take a rest in the quiet forest. He's 70 this year, and he's not as strong as he used to be, but he's still strong enough for an old man to go to the forest home and glide through the forest from miles away. This time he planned to stay there for a week or so, so he brought a lot of food. After packing everything, he set off. It's so windy here that Sam can barely stand upright. 
he could make it home before dark and light the stove before dark. He was finally home. As he approached the house, he noticed animal tracks in the snow. Although animals usually don't come this close to one's home, after he went out, he saw a little wolf cub on the porch, peacefully asleep. He woke up at the sound of the man's footsteps and rushed into the forest. Sam was very sympathetic to the animal, so after he lit the stove in the house, he took some food outside to feed the wolf cub. He saw that protein was needed for it, so he placed the food on an old tree stump at a safe distance from the house to avoid scaring the animals away again. Hunger got the better of the little cub, and it approached the food and started eating. When he was full, the little animal turned and walked into the forest. In the evening, Sam heard rustling on the porch, and when he opened the door, he saw the little wolf cub, his little gray friend, timidly entering the house and curling up next to the stove. The kind man did not drive it out but gave it a chance to warm and rest here. The next morning, the wolf cub returned to the forest. However, every night since then, it has returned to this man's home, sleeping peacefully by the stove. Sam stayed here for a week, and then it was time for him to go back to the city, but he decided to leave enough food for the little wolf. After returning to the city, Sam fell ill, and he could not return to the house in the forest for a short time. Months passed, and as soon as he had fully recovered, the first thing he did was to go back into the forest because he wanted to see the puppy and know how he was doing. But once there, you could not find it, but the food was all eaten. But there was no trace of the beast in the room, and that night, Sam was alone in the house thinking of the little wolf. Hearing the rustling on the porch, could it be him? He opened the door, but he was surprised. He didn't recognize the people at the door at all. He was amazed to see several people, who, judging by the clothes they were wearing, had escaped from prison and were now seeking shelter. They forced their way into the house and began to rummage through all the closets and cabinets. They took clothes and food, completely ignoring the existence of the old man. At Sam's protest, one of the men took out a knife and started attacking him. No one could have predicted what would happen next. The door was suddenly pushed open, and a young wolf rushed towards Roman's attacker. The man managed to stab the wolf with his knife, which caused the wolf to howl and run away. But then, a gigantic she-wolf, presumably the tough's mother, appeared and subdued her attacker in a second. Sam ran outside to his pup, who was lying in the snow, and he pulled it too. But it was too late. The little wolf's stiff body was crumbling in his arms, and he didn't seem to have the sign of life. Sam sat on the ground holding the wolf, who saved him, and crying for a long time. The she-wolf remained in the house, and she did not allow the other escapees to leave until Sam called the police. The police came, and they took the nasty criminals away. After that, Sam was left alone in this small house full of memories, and he cried bitterly. He remembered the first time he saw the gray pup, the little pup sleeping on his porch, and he cried in pain. He had never imagined that an animal would touch and sadden him so much that it sacrificed itself to save his life, like those heroic humans on a snowy day in Siberia. A local resident decides to go outside, which may sound easy to most of us, but he hits a shocking obstacle. In this entire day, it turned upside down. Jeff is about to go out to the yard outside, but when he opened the door, he found that it was stuck. There seemed to be something behind the door that prevented Jeff from leaving. This man was very strange, and he got out from the crack of the door. Also, here are some strange noises. Jeff's neighbor, Gina, explained that it sounded like a low growl from an animal. Suddenly, he felt that he had to see what was stopping him from going out and saw a full-grown Siberian tiger lying on the front porch. She was lying on the ground, looking exhausted. Jeff hurried back to the house and called the Ministry of Natural Resources. They sent a team to catch the tiger and inspect full recovery. It is important not only for itself but for the species as a whole. As the female tiger plays a vital role in maintaining the population, the Animal Rescue Center was established at the initiative of Russian President Vladimir Putin to study and protect the Siberian tiger population. It's a pity that she didn't allow people to come close.
When she came, she used her claws to protect herself and made up for the missing teeth. At first, the tiger seemed to recover, and she started eating meat containing antibiotics. Although she was too sick to eat solid food, the medical staff managed to take care of her. We can get along with animals in this world. Would wolves appear in the crevice of mountains, the young man lit his torch, trying to scare them off. In the light of the fire, instead of being scared away, the wolves stepped forward. One of them looked very familiar and gave a howl. The wolves moved back, and the young man raised his torch to look carefully. He exclaimed, isn't that the wolf I saved before? This is a story that took place in Gungshai in the 20th century. Once upon a time, there was a man named Bob who was picking herbs in the mountains, as he always did. He heard the cry of a wolf and moved closer to where the sound was coming from. Bob felt strange as the sound was coming from the ground. Bob got close enough to see a large cave ahead. The cave was less of an animal excavation and more like a natural formation. There was a wolf hissing inside. The wolf had been howling for so long, but no other wolves had come to help. It seemed that this wolf had been sent out to scout areas that the pack hadn't visited because it wasn't familiar with the terrain. It had accidentally fallen into this cave, and the lower half of its body may have been cut sharp by rocks next to the cave. Looking at the wolf in front of him and then at the backpack full of herbs, Bob thought long and hard. Isn't that what herbs are for? Bob couldn't bear to let the wolf die there, so he decided to save it. The wolf looked at Bob, perhaps he had seen what Bob was up to or just because his voice had gone hoarse. Bob, anyway, looking at the approaching Bob, surprisingly did not make any extra moves but quietly lay down in the hole. Bob took out his climbing rope and tied one end to a nearby tree while holding the other end himself. Bob decided to risk going down and bringing the wolf up first. He descended slowly and saw that the wolf did not attack. He then dared to land next, tied the rope to the wolf, and went up first and then dragged the wolf up. Next step was to heal the wolf's injured leg. Bob took out the herbs that had the power to stop bleeding, crushed them, and put them onto the wolf's injured leg. Then, Bob made some barriers around the cave to prevent other animals from falling in. After all this, Bob was ready to leave. He couldn't stay here any longer. The wolves might hear his calls or follow his scent. Before leaving, Bob took out his lunch and gave it to the wolf. Then, he went back down the hill. One day, Bob went up to the mountains to collect herbs, as usual, after the rain. But he encountered a landslide. Bob accidentally fell down the mountain and hung onto a tree on the cliff face. The cliff was too high for him to climb up. Bob took out his rope and tied it onto the tree. He started to climb down, moving carefully step by step. Suddenly, he vaguely heard some wolf growls. Oh no, am I falling into the wolf's lair, he thought. He looked around and saw the wolves around him. Bob had to be vigilant, but the wolves didn't seem to want to attack him. Bob saw that one of the wolves looked familiar. That's the one he saved earlier. Bob recognized the wolf, too. It threw the wild fruit in its mouth to Bob. Bob knew that the wolves are clever. The wolf would not do this to mean harm. It regarded Bob as a friend. Bob picked up the food. The wolf roared, and the surrounding wolves started to retreat. Only Bob and the wolf stayed. The wolf walked to Bob and rubbed against his trousers. Then, it headed for a crack in the cave. Seeing Bob didn't move, the wolf stopped and turned around to bark at Bob twice. Bob sensed the wolf's meaning. It was asking him to follow it. So Bob followed, looking at the footprints on the road. These wolves must have roamed the area regularly. As they made their way, the level mountain road gently sloped. When Bob obviously noticed that the path was gradually moving upwards, the road ahead became clear in the sunlight. The wolf and Bob walked out of the cave. The wolf did not stop. It still led the way. Bob stopped it. Here is okay. Further on, you may meet humans, Bob told the wolf seriously. 
He wasn't sure if it understood. After hearing Bob's words, the wolf growled. Then it headed back to the cave where they had just stepped out of. Bob looked back at the wolf. It was like a savior came down to earth and saved his life. That's how he looked at this wolf when he first rescued it. Lion is king of beasts. Why are they so close to the man? What happened? Why do lions treat him like this? The man's name is Alex. He was born in Ukraine. But he spent the vast majority of his life on a safari in South Africa. He loved wild animals since he was a child. So he become a veterinarian. Alex loves nature so much. He hiked across the Serengeti Plains. In the deserted wilderness, he can feel the wildness that has disappeared in the city this day. Alex goes backcountry hiking. But what he doesn't know is. What he experienced today is enough to change his whole life. On the way there. He suddenly heard some voices from nearby. This sound is not like a natural sound, but a sound made by an animal. After looking around. Alex can finally be sure. The source of the sound is behind a rock not far from him. He walked over cautiously and was taken aback. There's a lioness hiding behind a rock. He'd never been up close to a beast in the wild before. He was amazed by the size of the beast. At first he panicked. Because he thought the lioness would try to attack him. But all it does is growl. Then Alex noticed a problem. The lioness is injured so there is no way to attack him. Here's the thing, the lioness got caught in a trap. In this case the lioness simply cannot go very far. See the trap that traps the lioness. Alex knows he's safe. But he was shocked by the fact that the lioness got caught in the trap. There is no doubt that. It was done by poachers. If he just leave. They will find this lioness and kill her brutally to sell her for money. Alex is upset and angry. Such a beautiful and precious life was persecuted for this reason. Alex knew that he had to do something to help the lioness. Alex tries to get close to her. Trying to save her from the trap. When he approached the lioness, the frightened animal immediately rears up to protect itself with its giant paws. Alex could only quickly back away out of her reach. He tried many times, but the situation did not change. The wounded lioness won't let him approach. He often deals with wild animals. Alex noticed another problem. When the lioness pounced on him, he saw her belly. More specifically, Alex found this lioness not long after giving birth. Lionesses usually stay away from their cubs. That means her cubs are nearby. The cub apparently wouldn't have survived long without her. Alex knew he had to act fast. Cubs can be at risk if left alone for too long. If another predator finds them, things will get harder. The lioness is used to Alex's presence. But it's clear she still doesn't want Alex close to her. Now he has only one choice. Alex must find the lion cubs and bring them back to the lioness himself. Luckily, he knows the cubs won't be too far away. Alex looked around and eventually he found some traces. There are some footprints in the sand. These look like the footprints of a lion cub. Alex followed the footprints for a short distance. Later it heard some voices. Alex came to a patch of grass. He found three lion cubs hiding in the grass. They are all calling for mother. With three cubs in his arms, Alex quickly walked towards the place where the lioness was trapped. See a child appearing in front of oneself. The lioness tried again to break free from the trap. Alex is nervous because he doesn't want to make the lioness so excited. If this continues, she will hurt herself sooner or later. Alex gently puts the cubs down. Once on the ground, the lion cubs began to bray again. They walk slowly towards their mother. In the whole process, Alex tries to quiet the lioness. Make her understand that no one here will hurt her. 
Later, the lioness understands that Alex is not dangerous. She finally calmed down and lay quietly on the ground to let the children drink milk. Alex watched from a safe distance as the family reunited again. He is happy to bring the cubs to the lion mother. But he still has a problem. How to set the lioness free? Alex didn't know how long the lioness had been trapped. But he knew she must be hungry. Because she still has to nurse the cubs. Alex promises lioness he'll be back. Then he quickly ran back to the truck. He is looking for food nearby. He saw the remains of a zebra. Although this zebra doesn't have much meat left. He knew it was enough to restore a little strength to the lioness. This brave man returns to lioness and cubs after cutting off chunk of flesh from dead animal. At this time the lioness is not as hostile as before. In fact. She seems very eager to see Alex again. Especially when he shows up with a hunk of meat. Alex laughed as he watched the lion lick its lips. The lioness stood up hesitantly and smelled the meat, then began to eat. Alex took his chance. He approached the lioness and quickly sedated her slowly and carefully. Calm her down. Before the medicine takes effect. He took the lioness paw out of the trap. At this time, he put the three cubs back into the car. However, Alex was too focused on his task. He didn't notice that the lioness had stopped eating and was only a few feet away from him. Alex slowly raised his head and saw the lioness a few feet away. But the lioness didn't get angry and attacked. She just stands there. The lioness is injured and cannot walk normally. Alex wants to get her in the back of the truck before she passes out. He gave her a little push. The lioness approached Alex and started nudging him. She looks like a cat. Alex drove as fast as he could to the reserve where he lived. He and other staff tend to the injured cubs and bring them back to health. In this period of time, lioness and her cubs grow closer with Alex. After a few months, it's time to bring them back into the wild. Before the final farewell, lioness and cubs hug Alex again. Because they already liked him. Years passed. Alex's life returns to normal. Until one day, he saw an amazing scene. A pride of lions romped under the tree he used to eat lunch. When he stopped not far from the animals, one of the lions looked up at him. Seeing the man, the lions quickly stood up and walked towards him. At first, Alex was nervous. But when the lion came over, he thought the lion was very familiar. This is a lion cub he saved many years ago. Alex was surprised he came across it. What was even more shocking was that the lion seemed to remember him. Alex caresses its fur. The cub remembers him and everything he's done before. Alex knows he can't stay too long. So he turned around and went home. But at this moment. He heard the loud roar of the lion.